Welcome to a lesson on infinite geometric series. The goal of the video is to determine the sum of an infinite geometric series if it exists. As we mentioned before, summing or adding the terms of a geometric sequence creates what is called a geometric series. So here is a geometric sequence and here is a geometric series. Also notice that both of these go on forever, therefore they're an infinite geometric sequence and an infinite geometric series. And it is actually possible to find the sum of an infinite geometric series if the absolute value of r is less than one. And if that's the case, then infinite sum will be equal to a sub one divided by one minus r. Let's take a look at a model to show why it's possible to find the sum of an infinite geometric series. If we take a look at this model, this purple area would be one half times one half or one fourth and you can see it's one-fourth of this larger square. This next purple area would be one-fourth times one-fourth, which would be one-sixteenth, and notice how it's one-fourth of this smaller square. If we continue this process, the next area would be one-eighth times one-eighth, well that would be one-sixty-fourth, and notice that's one-fourth of this smaller square. And if this pattern continues on forever, we can continue making smaller and smaller squares, so this purple area would be finite and it would be contained within this larger square. And using this new formula, we can determine what the area of the purple region would be. Looking back at this infinite geometric series, to generate each consecutive term, we're multiplying by one-fourth. which we know by now means that r is equal to one-fourth. So since the absolute value of r is less than one, we can find the infinite sum by taking the first term and dividing by one minus r. Let's go ahead and give it a try. First term is equal to one-fourth, and we'll divide that by one minus r, which is also one-fourth. So this would be one-fourth over three-fourths, which remember is one-fourth divided by three-fourths or times the reciprocal of four-thirds. And this simplifies nicely. So this infinite sum would be equal to one-third. So all of this purple shaded region represents one-third of the area of this larger square. Let's go and take a look at a couple other examples. Let's see if we can find the sum of these series. We should first determine the value of r and then determine if the absolute value of r is less than one. If it's not, we cannot find the infinite sum. So remember to find the value of r, we can select any term in the series and then divide by the term before it. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the second term, so I'll take seven divided by 14. Well, that's equal to one half. The absolute value of one half is less than one, so we can find the infinite sum. So the infinite sum will be equal to the first term, which is 14, divided by one minus r. We said r is one half. Well, 14 divided by one half, that's the same as 14 times two. That'll give us a sum of 28. So for the second series, let's go ahead and find r. If we use the second term, r will be equal to five divided by one. Well, if r is equal to five, the absolute value of r is not less than one, therefore, this does not have an infinite sum because the sum approaches infinity. So we can say this sum does not exist. I wanna take a look at one more problem now. Does 0 0.999 repeating equal one? Well, one way to look at this would be to represent this repeating decimal as an infinite geometric series. If we take nine tenths plus nine hundredths plus nine thousandths and so on, this would equal 0.9 repeating as long as you represent this as an infinite geometric series. So written in this form, we would have a sub one would be equal to 0 0.9 Let's see if we can determine r. You might be able to tell by looking at this series, but let's go ahead and use the formula. 
r is equal to any term divided by the term before it. Let's go ahead and use the second term. So we have 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.9. Now if we wanted to eliminate the decimals here, we'd have to multiply both the top and the bottom by 100. And that would give us 9 in the numerator. And this would be 90 in the denominator. So r is equal to 1 tenth. If we write this as a decimal, we know that would be 0 0.1. The absolute value of r is less than 1. So we can find the value of this infinite sum using this new formula for the infinite sum of a geometric series. Let's go ahead and try it. The infinite sum will be equal to the first term, which we said was 0 0.9, divided by 1 minus r. 1 minus 1 tenth. This will be 0 0.9 divided by, well, 1 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.9, which is equal to 1. Now this outcome may be surprising to some, but we just showed that these two are equal to each other, and therefore they could be used interchangeably. So I'm sure you could probably impress your friends with this one. Thank you for watching and have a good day.